before we do the multiple choice tests. Any questions? Okay. Uh, oh, yes. You will you need a calculator for today, for for the test. You need to borrow one just for after the test. Okay. Yeah, this is a non-calculator test. Unless if you need a desk security blanket, you can have one beside you. But. Yeah, I think never mind. I think you said it. Oh, I read it. But test corrections are due the 10th, right? For the 9th. For the second test? Yes. 10th uh, is Monday. That is the last day of classes. Okay. So grades are due the 12th. Okay. So they're going to turn it in? They're turning it in by the end of the 10th. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess it needs to be more explicit. If I say by the 10th, in my mind, I'm thinking end of the day, but I guess literally it would mean before the day. So end of the day on the day. Okay. All right. We're rolling. All right, so I basically have a slinky here that's dangling not touching the rod at all. It's just being held up here. And I've got a 20 gram mass hanging on it. And I'm just gonna trust that it's 20 grams for the sake of this. When there was nothing on it, the bottom of the slinky was at 30 centimeters. I put the 20 gram mass on it and the new position of that bottom rung is 21.925 centimeters. And I got that because when you put it on there, the bottom of the slinky basically goes like this. And so I measured the top and the bottom of that last coil and found the average. So this is the top and bottom of the last coil and that's the midpoint. So the question I ask you is if I put a 50 gram mass on there, how much is it gonna hang? How much more? Or how much, what will be the final position? Two. One and a half times, or two and a half times. Times what? Twenty. So, two and a half times would put it at fifty. Wait, I'm looking for a position. When you said two and a half times the twenty. Well, if it's fifty, then that's twenty. So it's. That's the Say again? Yeah, but, really wrong. but I'm, I'm saying it would, it would, the distance should double too, or two and a half. All right, so or maybe you're saying, you know. when you say the distance, you're talking about if I take that difference right there and multiply it times two and a half? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely multiplying the mass by two and a half. So the, yeah, that's a 50. And there's a hook on it. Don't get it. Ah, very nice. All right, so we can, anyone with a speculation before we actually do a measurement? Besides Dylan and Chloe, you started with one and then you backed off. I, I, I cut her off. Um, I was, I was agreeing with him. I just, was trying to help with the wording somehow. yeah somehow but like it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> the length is gonna double from the starting point basically from the starting okay so whatever this distance is yeah maybe that's what yeah, yeah. all right so what is the distance how much did it stretch with the 20 gram mass on there Zero 
So with a 50 gram mass, so your speculation, if I understood what you were going for, I guess both of you, is that if I, since that can multiply by two and a half, if I multiply this by two and a half, that tells me what the new stretch is. Allegedly. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so what is this times two and a half? Yes. All right, so if I start at 30 centimeters and it stretches this much, where will the new position be? 0.50187. Say it again. So you just add that plus the three? No, no, it's, that's how much it's going to stretch, so it's that minus that. 0.098125. Are you betting your brain on this? No. <laughs> Can I make my answer after? No, 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 no. That's before we put the ball on the wheel. Okay. All right, so that's fine. Where is that? 6.5 centimeters. And not positive. I said six point five and ten point nine. So my average uh, two point two is eight point seven. All right, so our prediction is this right here. What it comes out to be is 0 0.087 meters. You know, considering the amount that it's stretched, it, I mean, if we look at it this way, it's no bragging rights there, but if we look at it from the point of view of, we predicted it would stretch that amount and it stretched 0.213 meters. Uh, that, looks a whole lot better. So let's go with this view. Matter of fact, your speculation is ideal. And it's officially not because the mass was multiplied by two and a half. Officially, it's because the weight multiplied by two and a half. Because we're dealing with forces here. So if we look at the mass that I had hanging on there, and I had it written up here before, but we have weight hanging down and we have this force acting upward. And F sub S, because it's, it's a spring force or an elastic force, it's basically gonna move down until it's in equilibrium again. Or I can, if I lower it gently, I can put it into equilibrium. And so we have the weight Mg is equal to this spring force. Now, the spring force is a force, therefore it is a vector. And it should be proportional to the amount of weight that is hanging on there. So if I double the weight, I'm gonna double the amount of force that's required, and I will double the distance that it stretches from equilibrium. So F sub S, well, just jumping into it, So we end up with this relationship here that as the weight increases, the force that is required to put it in equilibrium will increase and is directly proportional to how much it stretches. This is known as Hooke's Law. And One of the, I find bizarre stories. Uh, Hook basically was starting to look into this and he hadn't quite proven to himself that it was true, but he had good suspicion that this was this relationship worked. And so he did a four man's copyright. He 
basically took the Latin, he took the expression, as the force, so goes the stretch, translated that into Latin, took the Latin, took the letters from the Latin, and then scrambled them up, and basically, so if anyone else later claimed that they had come up with this, he could say, whoa, 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 whoa. If we take the string of letters here and we scramble them, it's an anagram for this Latin expression, which means exactly what you just found. I find it a bizarre little physics story, but apparently that it, before you really could, I guess it was the simplest way to claim something early. What's that? I said, like, throw your own code in there. Where yeah. You, yeah. Copyright. It's like a, what's that? Copyright. Yeah. yeah, I mean, copyright didn't quite exist yet, but. Pre-copyright. Four minutes copyright. So there's this constant right here. I guess there's two aspects that we need to look at. One is the negative sign, and the other one is the constant. If we, well, let's address the, the negative first. What does the negative mean? That force is in the opposite direction. To what? To the other side of the equal sign. <laughs> <laughs> to the force of gravity? To the spring force. Not necessarily uh, against the force of gravity. The spring force? The opposite that is, the spring force is opposite what? Oh, the force of the weight. Force spring constant and the distance. Work on the language. How can you say such words in here? Oh. They're sensitive ears. Uh, the displacement. What is this as the symbol for? Displacement. Displacement. Yeah. yeah. Is this way you say it already? I, I've corrected myself. Oh. <laughs> this is the force that the spring exerts on the mass. Because the spring started up here, when you put the mass on, it stretches this way. So my displacement's in that direction, but the force the spring exerts is that way. So it opposes the stretch. Or if I put it up beyond where it naturally hangs, now the force is pushing downwards. An ideal spring would be pushing downwards because the displacement is up. If it went horizontally, because we can do some nice problems on paper with the horizontal and frictionless surface, and that what that's why it's not always opposing the weight. Or if I put it up, it's in the same direction as the weight. So the minus sign just says that the force that the spring exerts is opposite the direction of whether it's stretched or compressed. It's force is trying to put it back towards equilibrium. K is the, the spring constant. which would have been introduced in the video on the ski problem in the energy section. I think the video is titled The Ski Problem with Spring. We can find it simply enough in this situation, although we'll get, we would get two different answers. Ideally, if this were a lab, we would do I think the lab has you're doing five different measurements and then you get the slope of the line. But let's just assume that one of these is actually correct. Why don't we take it? See, that's what it, that was our prediction. This was actual. So this was actual prediction. So let's assume that that is actually correct and that the 20 gram mass is a little bit off. It stretched 0.213 meters. We can just do a little plug and chug here that the force that the spring exerted would have been equal to the weight because in theory it's an equilibrium and so we'd stop oscillating a little bit there. So we have this weight acting down on the spring of 0.05 kilograms times 9.798 meters per second squared. Which is point four something, four nine something, four eight nine.
units? Uh, newtons. Yes. So we're pulling down the 0.4899 newtons of force. The spring obviously is going to be equal to the same magnitude. And so we have 0.4899 is equal to K times how much it actually stretched, 0.213 meters. The minus sign sort of went away because we're just look, the spring constant is a positive number. The negative sign is indicating direction, and I've already taken direction into account. If we wanted to be retentive about it, if I say up is positive, which I declared over at the far left corner, then that would be positive 0.4899 newtons is equal to negative k times negative 0.213 meters because the stretch was downwards. Minus signs cancel out and we'll have back to this. So the spring constant for this spring is doing the fancy math 0.4899, number 0.213. So it's ideal to make the opposite direction that the spring stretches positive. So the, I just so that the signs cancel. The the signs going to end up canceling even if we make it down positive. Okay. If we make down positive, then that would be a that negative, would, and that okay. would be positive, and minus signs still cancel. All right. Point three. Sorry. That can't be good. That's what I got to. You get to 0.4899 divided by 0.213? Correct. And you got 0.3. No, I got 2.3. Okay, that's the part I was missing. Sorry about that. <laughs> 2.3 what? I don't know that part. Newtons over meters? Yeah, newtons over meters. See, I do know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, give it to other people an opportunity. Yeah. So we now have the spring constant. And so there's a number of problems in the master set when I give you information about so it stretches a certain amount, what's the spring constant? This is basically the approach. That assumes that it's in equilibrium so that these forces are equal in magnitude. However, it doesn't have to be. Let's put the 20 back on it. So that I got a little bit more room. That's not the coordination, apparently. There, wait. There we go, got that one hooked. Perfect. All right. So it's somewhat in equilibrium, obviously. It's shaking around a little bit. In an ideal problem that would be written on paper, it's in equilibrium. But now I pull it down and I let go. Obviously, not in equilibrium most of the time because it starts out at rest, it gets faster, then it slows down, stops, gets faster, slows down, stops, so on. Matter of fact, its motion could be described quite nicely if I have an eraser. If I looked at the position versus time of that, if we make zero to be the base down here, then my position's positive the entire time. Let's see, I started out down here at the low point, and then it suddenly goes up here, and then back down, and then up here, and then back down. What kind of curve is that? I have a sign, and did you want to have a different one? Cosine. Or cosine. Yes, yeah, sine. Which would make more sense to use here, sine or cosine? I can never remember which one. Cosine. Where does the sine curve start? At time of, at zero, where is the sine? Always sine starts at the bottom. Yes, yeah, so cosine starts at the bottom. Ooh, uh, be careful. It depends on what you mean by top and bottom. Which one starts at zero? Cosine starts at zero. Okay. Or the second choice is? Starts at higher. Like it starts at the two 
choices, you pick whatever way the top is. All right. That was a bastardization of a line from recess. A cosine, traditional cosine curve starts at one, goes down to negative one, and then back up, and then repeats. That's the cosine. Sine starts at zero. That's right, because it looks like a sideways S. That's how I remember that. Okay, if that's what works for you. Oh, I guess, yeah, sure. Uh, so traditionally, when you're when you're starting at a maximum or a minimum value, cosine makes life just a little bit easier. Otherwise, you start getting into the idea of phase shift, which I don't want to deal with right now. But apparently, Thomas does. So, so if that's my position versus time. Um, See if we can just sort of map out velocity versus time. Now, if you've had calculus, you probably, and especially with calculus with trig functions, you already know what this is going to be. If you haven't had calculus yet, let's just work it out. I know this is the slope of this. Well, the slope here, uh, that's zero at that point. The slope here is zero, the slope here is zero, there is zero, and zero. In this first region here, my slope positive or negative? Positive. So it'll be something like that. And then in the next region? Negative. And it will oscillate back and forth. What is that graph? Sine. Yeah. So this is actually a negative cosine, because it's starting down here. This is a sign. If we went to the next one, looking at our acceleration first time. Did, did this for uh, any kind of spring? Ideal spring. Ideal spring. Yeah. And even though the slinky is not ideal, if uh, there's an extra factor that you would need to throw in for the less than ideal, but there's a lab where the results come.